three, two, one. Brian Green, ladies and gentlemen, how are you, sir? Good, thank you. How are Thanks you? Thanks for doing this, man. Oh, it's I've, my pleasure. I've enjoyed your work for many, many, many years. So uh, I really appreciate you coming in well, here. Well, thank and you. Talking. Appreciate that. And I, like I was telling you, I just started your new book. And how's it going? It's going well. It's uh, it hasn't confused the shit out of me yet, but I know it's coming. It will be coming, <laughs> no doubt, no doubt. With all your work, so the beginning of time, the beginning of the universe, to the end. That's essentially what you're summarizing. Yeah, that's the uh, that's the backdrop to the entire narrative of the book. I, I basically want the reader to get a feel for the whole thing, how it started how things like you and me rise up, how consciousness emerges, issues of free will and whether we have it, and then on to the future, what's gonna happen to us and the world and the universe as time elapses to the far, far future. It's, uh, I'm, I'm just getting to the part where you're talking about how entropy and evolution sort of co-mingle to, to create life. And when you think of entropy, a lot of people think of something dissolving into chaos. Yeah, exactly. But that's the, not necessarily the case. It's only part of the story. I mean, entropy kind of gets a bad rap, right? It's the thing yeah. that you want to avoid, but somehow the laws of physics don't allow you to avoid it. It's this disintegration. It's this decay. It's this drive toward disorder. And that's kind of true. But the reality of the situation is more subtle because overall, entropy needs to go up. But that doesn't mean there can't be little pockets of order that form along the way. And in fact, the universe is incredibly clever. Stars, the ubiquitous feature of the heavens, they are pockets of order that naturally form, but as they form, they increase the entropy in the surroundings. Mm. 